नमस्ते जय हिंद एंड वेलकम टू दिस एडिशन ऑफ द राइट स्टैंड ऑन दिस डेट नाइन इयर्स अगो प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी एज्यूम चार्ज ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एंड सिंस देन अंडर हिज लीडरशिप हिज टीम हैज बीन वॉन्टिंग और कमिटेड टू लिविंग अप टू अ प्रोमिस अ प्रोमिस दैट वुड टेक इंडिया टू एन आत्मनिर्भर भारत a vision that's been outlined over 9 long years step by step inch by inch a promise that started with sabka saath and sabka vikas and then saw sabka vishwas added to it and eventually now find sabka prayas also added to this entire motto the story of bharat that began with a vision of make in india jam portal connecting and antyodaya giving the benefit reaching to the person standing last in the queue last mile delivery to now setting up the vision of an atmanirbhar bharat an ek bharat a shreshth bharat a viksit bharat by the time we as a nation complete 100 years of our independence in 2047 9 years of prime minister narendra modi 9 years of seva sushasan that's the commitment and now prime minister narendra modi further saying that we will only endeavor to work harder as the government completes 9 years enters into its 10th year of governance on wednesday we are expecting prime minister narendra modi to address a large gathering in old bound rajasthan very soon but what are the eight or nine pillars over the last 9 years that the government has been focusing on a strong stable secure sustainable socially well scientifically driven self reliant and of course steeped in its sanatan roots and working towards statesmanship as bharat announces itself as the champion the carer and of course voice of the global south at the global stage in the year of the G20 leadership these are the pillars around which prime minister narendra modi has tried to stitch the story of bharat bharat under his leadership bharat under a bjp that's gone on from strength to strength a bharat where he believes and he has claimed that will bring back the actual ethos of what was envisioned for this country strong stable secure sustainable scientific socially well self reliant sanatan and of course statesman or statesman like now this is also prime minister narendra modi's leadership but this is also the image of bharat that his leadership and his team want to portray have they delivered have they been able to make good these are questions that remain as these pillars go away we will debate and we are also standing by for uh, some of the ministers in his team to join us tonight on this edition we should have the moi and skills skill development rajiv chandrashekhar ji joining us but first ladies and gentlemen let's try and trace out how far has prime minister narendra modi taken india under his leadership how far have his team managed to steer india in the direction of a viksit atmanirbhar bharat this entire aspect of atmanirbharta came through during the time of the pandemic but has prime minister narendra modi led bjp government delivered what is it that they have achieved and what has changed in terms of technology infrastructure self reliance and connectivity चुनौती ये नहीं है कि आप कितने एफिशिएंट हैं, बल्कि चुनौती ये तय करने में है कि जहां जो डेफिशिएंसी है वो कैसे दूर होगी इंडिया टारगेट इज क्लियर फाइव ट्रिलियन इकोनॉमी एंड टू अचीव दैट द प्राइम मिनिस्टर हैज मेड अप हिज माइंड इट्स सेल्फ रिलायंस connectivity and vocal for local as pm narendra modi has shown meticulous dedication towards india's infrastructure push evident from the fact that india now has 16 vande bharat routes that are operational two more that have been flagged off 
indigenously manufactured semi-high speed self-propelled trains all achieved in a span of 4 years India's rail infra push has been so comprehensive that the country has saw many milestones including the first double decker passenger train privately operated train services and launch of high speed train projects यदि लक्ष्य तुरंत है यात्राएं दिगंध है समंदर और चुनौतियां अनंत है भारत का उत्तर है विक्रांत Atmanirbharta push in the defense sector has been the prime minister's pet project and that push ensures our forces not only are better equipped but are also proud of its self reliance Just recently the Indian Navy achieved a historic milestone by undertaking a maiden night landing of MiG 29K on INS Vikrant Jo suvidha shahar ko uplabdh hai wo suvidha gaon ko bhi uplabdh honi chahiye अगर शहर में बिजली जगमगाती है तो गांव में भी बिजली जगमगानी चाहिए अगर शहर के लोग मन चाहे तब टीवी देख सकते हैं गांव के लोग भी देख सके इंटरनेशनल एनर्जी एजेंसी हैज कॉल्ड इंडिया रूरल इलेक्ट्रिफिकेशन पुश वन ऑफ द ग्रेटेस्ट सक्सेस स्टोरीज By 2021 India's average rural power supply improved to 22 hours a day. Prime Minister Gati Shakti, the National Infrastructure Master Plan seamlessly links road, rail, air and water transport. Total investment for 83,677 km long roads committed new highways is estimated at 10.63 lakh crores under the Bharat Mala Pariyojana. Meanwhile the Udan scheme has ensured that every Indian can now take to the skies. Bharat ka startup ecosystem aaj duniya mein apna parcham lehra raha hai. Ye Bharat ke startup ecosystem ki taakat hai. Wo passion se sincerity se aur integrity se bhara hua hai. Then the Modi government set out through initiatives like Make in India to encourage manufacturing. Under the Modi government, India has emerged as the third largest startup ecosystem in the world. This is thanks to key policy initiatives like Startup India with a 10,000 crore funding pool which has made it easy for Indian startups to launch, operate and seek funds. Bharat ki sadi banane ke liye bahut zaruri hai ki Bharat ke yuva पढ़ाई के साथ ही स्किल में भी उतने ही दक्ष हो स्कीम्स लाइक स्किल इंडिया एंड स्टैंड अप इंडिया हैव आल्सो बीन इमेंसली सक्सेसफुल 23 न्यू यूनिकॉर्न्स हैव कम अप इन जस्ट द लास्ट वन ईयर ओवरटेकिंग चाइना फॉर द सेकंड कंसेक्यूटिव ईयर एंड जस्ट लाइक दैट इंडियाज जर्नी टुवर्ड्स सेल्फ रिलायंस हैज ओनली बिगन Well atmanirbharta also means that the economy has to grow there are complaints from the opposition of inflation of unemployment but the government stacks up the numbers and is showing india as the fifth largest economy in the world fast moving towards becoming a five trillion economy in 2019 prime minister narendra modi had famously envisioned that india would become a 5 trillion economy by 2024 2025 at that time no one had thought about the covid pandemic that set the entire world back by a few years the deadline may have been moved forward by a year 25 26 but india's economy still remains a bright spot amid global headwinds भारत ने अगले पांच साल में अपनी इकोनॉमी को दो गुनी करके फाइव ट्रिलियन डॉलर तक पहुंचने का लक्ष्य रखा है 
When the NDA government began its second tenure at the center, Prime Minister Modi outlined his vision for the economy. 2025 deadline for a 5 trillion economy. While that deadline may be pushed forward, India's economy still remains a bright spot amid global headwinds. The International Monetary Fund has projected aid globally despite facing significant challenges such as financial sector turmoil, inflationary pressures and the effects of the Russia-Ukraine war which have had effects around the world. India deserves to be called a bright spot on this otherwise darker horizon, a fast-growing economy even during these difficult times. This growth is underpinned by structural reforms. So the endorsement coming from global platforms that the growth is being underpinned or underlined by structural reforms. Joining us now is the MOS IT and Skill Development, Rajiv Chandu Shekharji. Rajiv ji, Namaste, Jai Hind. Can you hear me, sir? I can hear you, Anand. Thank you. So nine years of Modi Sarkar and you're joining us live at this point. May I ask you? Uh, there is a book that's been launched that talks about Seva Sushasan and there is this uh, entire endeavor of uh, Sampark, Jan Sampark. But for you, what is the single biggest achievement under Prime Minister Narendra Modi in the last nine years? Look, I, I, I don't think, uh, uh, Anand, there is, a, there is a, you know, one single thing, but if you have to look at one uh, broad idea, it is hmm. that in a lot of ways, India, the potential of India, the potential of Indians that had been held back for six and a half decades is today finally coming to fruition after nine years of very, very hard work, really committed, uh, relentless uh, to his vision of this new India, to his vision that India can do uh, significantly better than it has in the past of Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji. Uh, we are at a point where we are obviously, uh, I think, uh, very, very obviously to most Indians and to most foreign observers uh, at the most exciting time in India's history. Uh, so if there is one thing, I think it is the deep, uh, very, very deep transformation of India's governance, mm. the stability and the economic expansion in the last nine years and the safety and security uh, that uh, India today uh, can assure its citizens uh, be it from terrorism or from any other force uh, around uh, its neighborhood. So I think uh, the last nine years have been very, very decisively uh, uh, change driven, uh, if I can use that phrase, Anand, uh, at, uh, mm. compared to any other point in history of India. Seva and Sushasan is what you have uh, also outlined. But uh, if I were to take the opposition, Rajiv ji, given Karnataka as an example, they have cited the government promised no corruption. One of the reasons for the BJP's loss is corruption. The government promised a curb on inflation and making things accessible. LPG cylinder was being done, puja, and they said inflation. Then the third point the opposition pulls up is jobs. The Prime Minister promised two crore jobs. Where are the jobs? And I think that was also another reason why it's being pinned as a loss for the BJP in Karnataka. How would you respond to that, Rajiv no, look, I think there is the loss in Karnataka is there. Everybody uh, accepts it. It is a political setback. Uh, we will play the role of a constructive opposition in Karnataka. And there are many reasons for that loss that our uh, party leadership will go into. But certainly that has nothing to do with uh, or take away from the fact that over the last nine years, India has progressed tremendously. Indians have seen a very, very a different type of governance from Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji and the, the, the fruits of that, if you want to call it that, of Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji's work for the last nine years is uh, visible. We were the 11th largest economy in the world. We are the fifth largest economy in the world, soon to uh, within striking distance of being third largest economy in the world. We were uh, living in the, in the 10 years of the UPA Congress in the last decade where corruption, inflation, degrowth, uh, in, uh, investments running away from the country were the norm. Uh, the financial sector collapsed was a norm. And today we are living in an era where there is uh, unprecedented uh, strength in our financial sector and economy and investments are at an all time high. Hmm. Look, we, you know, to the specific criticisms or the specific opportunism of the opposition to pick on the most vulnerable 
time in the history of the world mm. where the world is grappling with a covid and the impact of that on workforces around the world then this ukraine uh, russia conflict that has caused severe spikes in hydrocarbon and petroleum prices all around the world and to use that uh, to prey on people's vulnerabilities is what the opposition does mm. but you know that is not in any way representative these last nine two years of difficult times that the world has gone through and india has in a way, in a way sailed through those turbulent uh, times with strength and uh, we are on the other side of the storm mm. even stronger is the fact uh, um, but uh, that petroleum prices are uh, high because of the conflicts in europe uh, of course we mm. know it and uh, does that impact uh, gas prices of course it does and we have taken uh, pains to explain that to people that you know we have to uh, through this navigate through this global storm uh, even as we remain strong and i just want to point out to you uh, uh, anand that for example fertilizer prices mm. which have been impacted significantly by the supply chain disruptions due to the european conflict we have kept steady we have not allowed any availability of fertilizer to be impacted fertilizer prices have remained constant and uh, for the farmers so we have tried to do despite very very adverse and challenging situations mm. uh, in the global scenario we have tried to do the very best and i can tell you that uh, the opposition may be using this uh, from a point of opportunistic politics in karnataka or elsewhere but the people of india certainly understand Did. what the last 9 years means and what the next uh, 10 years will mean uh, mm. under uh, prime minister narendra modi ji and the bjp uh, I- there are many aspects i would like to speak you about speak to you about but we'll focus on tech we'll focus on tech and skill development in sure. tech uh, we've we've just done a story today on news18.com where japan and japan's minister or japan was inspired by upi by our digital infrastructure but on the other day, other hand there is also the digital vulnerability data vulnerability two aspects that we as a nation will have to saddle and we'll have to grow as we are setting an example for 35 to 36 nations across the world we are also looking at the privacy of data and protection uh, of the privacy and information of nearly 1.4 billion people look uh, you you're absolutely right and it, uh, you know under prime minister narendra modi ji technology has taken a very different dimension and scale in and and the fact that technology today is being deployed at scale to transform the lives of our citizens and their relationship with government Uh, we are today about 83 crore indians that are connected to the internet making us the largest connected nation in the world and just over uh, within striking distance in a couple of years we will have all 120 crore indians connected to the internet mm. and so it is our mission it is our prime minister's mission to make sure that the internet is safe and trusted that we have global standard laws that essentially protect the digital nagrik the indian mm. consumer as well as at the same time allow innovation to flourish and whether those laws are to do with the digital data protection law mm. or the forthcoming digital india act uh, you know we are essentially committed to build the internet to enable our uh, citizens but at the same time to make sure the internet is a safe and trusted place for our digital nagrics who use the internet so you will see that uh, it is a mission on our part anand mm. to make sure that technology is made available safely and uh, inclusively inclusively to all indian citizens well technology is also been used uh, as a as a, as a political tool against the bjp so are you going to be able to secure yourself come looks about 2024 from an onslaught of propaganda digitally and also with ai being used rajiv ji if i may ask you No, Anand. Anand, <laughs> propaganda is the only tool that our opposition has today, and you've seen it in 14, you've seen it in 19, you have seen it uh, repeatedly being used. Uh, I say lies and misinformation are the only tool that the Congress have to cover up for all of its incompetence and corruption. Uh, they sometimes are successful in it. Uh, in the state of Karnataka, they certainly showed that they were successful users of that misinformation and the politics of lies. but uh, look for us the mission towards making sure the internet is safe and trusted and that we have all the laws and safeguards in place has very little to do with politics it has to do with the fact that hmm. we consider uh, prime minister narendra modi ji's government considers it its mission 
to deliver uh, um, uh, the technology to empower all our Indians, but at the same time ensure that that technology does not cause harm. Mm. And uh, this is Prime Minister Narendra Modi's vision. And over the last nine years, India has become the preeminent country in the use of technology mm. to empower citizens. And that is why, as you said, the Japanese finance minister or whether it is, uh, you know, ministers from all around Africa and Europe, look at our India stack, look at our global digital public infrastructure and say, we also want to follow the same path that India has. Mm. And that is all absolutely clearly due to Prime Minister Narendra Modi's vision, his hard work and his commitment of resources to where these resources were absolutely necessary to the, create this innovation ecosystem. By my final question before I move on to the face-off uh, between the BJP and the Congress tonight on the right stand, Rajiv Ji, is on skill. 750 million workforce is what we're going to be ready with around 2030. I was in <clears> Sydney <throat> recently. Uh, and I have traveled abroad to other places uh, following the WTO and other uh, economic pacts that the government is signing, trade pacts. One of the aspects is skilling. Is our workforce skilled enough to meet the demands of the world? Because we are going to be the workforce basket for the world very soon. No, it's an absolutely good question, Anand, and a very relevant question because such a large percentage of our population are young Indians who are all looking to the future with hope, uh, they have aspirations, they have uh, a tremendous amount of energy and determination to create these bright, successful futures for themselves. Mm. And I want to start by telling you a, a, a very, very stark fact. Mm. Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji became Prime Minister. Almost three out of every four Indians in the workforce of 420 million were unskilled. That was the legacy that Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji inherited mm. in 2014 after 65 years or 60 years of independence and uh, 65 years of independence and it was shameful that only a few elite people were able to uh, access skills and education. Mm. Over the last nine years, the Prime Minister has successfully uh, implemented a skilling program that has touched almost 65 million young Indians and given them skills of various kinds, white collar, blue collar, micro entrepreneurship, self-employment. And starting this year in 23, in this budget alone, he has given us 8,800 crores and his focus is future ready, industry ready skills mm. for our young Indians. And this year alone, I, I, I think the skill ministry will cover almost one crore young Indian skill in various future ready contemporary skills. Mm. And I think the collective impact of all this will be uh, Anand, mm. that India certainly and young talent from India certainly can pursue opportunities all around the world. And conversely, that the Indian talent will be seen by global economies as a talent pool for their own economies and their own needs. Well, it's a hard task because you've got many, many miles to go before you get that number. And this number is only going to increase. One crore perhaps is lots. 10 million is a lot of people. But given the size of the unskilled population, uh, perhaps that percentage has to get better. And I'm sure you're well aware of that. Rajiv Ji, we're going to keep this conversation here today uh, shorter. And hopefully, very soon, we'll be able to speak to you at length on the DPDP. Very, very soon. Thank you very, very much. Namaste and Jain. Thank you very much, sir. Okay.